Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here on Hout Baylor on with me C Waddy. It is the start of August ladies and gents and that means no doubt we have got a lot of work to do. However, very quickly, I want to take you over and show you what I did at the end of July um, to um, again increase our farming um, essentials. You will notice I don't have a lot of money sitting in my bank account at the minute. I'm down to 49,000 bucks. Um, the reason for that is I spent quite a bit of money off of camera and I probably should have jumped in a tractor or a vehicle to have come up down here but hey ho. I'll go for a bit of a morning jog here in August. We do need to start doing some seeding I think today. So we'll get to that in a minute, but we'll take you over to the lovely cows. And you may have already noticed. Da, 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 I've expanded my cow operation. I have added a second cow pen, ladies and gentlemen. The reason for that is I'm going to need quite a bit of milk to run my um, um, dairy over there and produce my butter and my cheese, things like that. So, I've added in and included a whole other pen. A whole other pen of cows. And I actually got a red one this time. I remembered to place the right colour that I wanted to place over there. But because of all the faffing about and shenanigans and everything that we had with that one, um, I ended up getting it placed with the wrong colour. Now, unfortunately does mean there's a bit of serious some um, terraforming and landscaping had to be done this field is no longer very flat um <laughs> uh the chances of me mowing any grass off it now are very very slim and non-existent i think we will agree but i'm hoping in time that's not going to matter too much because um I'm hoping I'm profitable enough with my farm from all my other avenues, my crops, my productions and everything. But should I actually need things like hay, straw, silage, TMR, etc, etc, etc. I'll just buy it. I'll just buy it if I need it. I don't mind paying to provide the materials for the cows because they will be giving us stuff back in the form of milk and manure and slurry and all that other good stuff that we can then also sell plus when the cows start getting a little bit old and once they start reproducing and we've got baby cows um we'll be able to sell some of those off especially the the meat ones the um the meat cows the beef cows we can sell off all of those baby cows and stuff that don't produce milk and that will make us a nice bit of profit. You can see we've already got plenty of manure coming. Well, let's have a look then. Let's have a look at how things are on. Right, we've got to harvest sorghum, ladies and gentlemen. The sorghum field needs to be harvested. Okay. Right. Um... Have a think. Let's have a think. What am I going to do? Uh, canola on 36. Probably going to do oats on those two fields. We're going to do barley on these two fields. Going to do soybeans on the big super duper uber field. Um. After the sunflowers have been harvested, I think I'm actually going to plant olives. I might do an olive um, thing because I've got my little thing down here. I might get into doing olives. But yeah, we could definitely do then. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting the harvester going. And our sorghum harvested. And then we could also do with our two little cedar friends. No, oh, I'm not going to run back. <laughs> I'm not going to run around. Screw that. Let's teleport. Let's go get out. Harvested. 
on the job. I bought a new trailer as well. Got a new little tra tippy trailer. Um, which helps with my um, animals. It's a bit bigger capacity than my previous trailer. Which I still have, by the way. I still have the 29,000 litre trailer. I mean, just in case anybody was curious about that. Yeah, quick, let's check the crop calendar then. Make sure we can plant. We can plant canola. Right. So we'll come back to that. We'll take this fella. We'll take this fella and a cedar. We'll set him to an hour. We'll grab the new Holland as well in a second. And again, what we'll do is we'll have um, we'll have two harvesters on the go, and we'll we'll clear that course to start with, and then we'll make a new one. Got it. off a bit further back. Start him off a bit further back. We'll open that. Uh, I'm actually going to make this quite a bit smaller. Number of tools, number of headlands, four. Headland overlap, 25%. Don't need to do 25%. We'll do 10% overlap. And row, row angle is zero. Field margin, no, we don't want to make the field any bigger. We'll do two tools. Right, you're going to be Mr. Left then. Okay, fair enough. Happy as Larry. Good job. Uh, save course, activate field 36, two times 12 meter. Right, now we'll take this fella. Load him up. We'll put some seed in him too. As we go. Ah, caught the cultivator. Sewing machine uses fertilizer is deactivated. Right. Uh, I want to. Oh, God. It's fine.
I'm going to be the right one. Do I hit that button there? Uh, go. Um, no, stop, please. Um, I've got a feeling this fella's not done his job right either. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Both of them are in now. Oh, this is going to be, be chaos. Stop. Let the other fella do what he wants to do for a minute. <laughs> I was really hoping he'd be a bit further ahead by now. Wait for him to move on a bit. Go. new trailer I do because we're going to need to do obviously there's going to be a lot of sorghum on this field <laughs> can I just uh, maybe give that a nudge as a goodbye no Do this.
and do a headland. I think I might have to get another mulch, you know, as well, and do two tractors mulching fields. Because the fields are getting quite big now. Be nice to get that job done a little bit quick. Unfortunately, we don't have any big mulchers. We've got the biggest mulcher that's available in the game, or via mods. So at the moment, there's no way to really speed up the mulching process apart from running extra mulchers. Um, I've also got a tanker parked at the... Um, at the shop. That will be for slurry and um, milk transport. That will be. I forgot about that. I forgot I'd bought that <laughs> in preparation for today's uh, recording. The, uh... The eight percent full. So here we go then, ladies and gents. We're getting through it. We're at 82%. The fill level warning will kick in in a minute. My beacon's come on next to me and it's flashing away. We've got quite um, you know, nice load of sorghum here. So far, anyway. Like I say, this field should yield a decent amount of sorghum, actually. Yeah, should be a lot easier. Should get a little bit more in that trailer, I think. Of course, I could have used the truck as well. <laughs> I keep forgetting we've got that truck. What I might do is use that to transport all the stuff from the silo to the grain mill. That might be better. Take the trailer and lo unload it in the silo for now when it gets full. And then use the truck to transport all the sorghum in one bulk, bulk offering. Um, and that will speed saves me having to run the trailer backwards and forwards backwards and forwards between the silo and the uh, grain mill but yeah I'm very pleased I got the second cow pen added it's going to be nice to have that extra production buffer you know 
surplus, we're going to have the manure, which we can sell and get rid of. We've got the slurry, which we can sell and get rid of. Um, I mean, we could always use it as a fertiliser as well, but I don't think any of the manure spreaders or slurry spreaders are going to compete with my current um, oilseed radish and fertiliser spreading approach. I think that's just the better way to go at the moment. I mean, my fertiliser spreader is pretty good at chucking the fertiliser over a wide area. I don't think there's any manure spreaders or slurry spreaders that come close to having that kind of working width. My beacon on again. As fill level warning kicks in at 85%. To say, hey, get the grain cart. <laughs> get the grain driver to unload you. I think I'll do that. Stop there. Yes, my cow pen is my cow pens are in. I'm also thinking possibly maybe adding pigs. But if I add the pigs, I will have to um procure and purchase pig food. I'm not gonna be doing all the root crops and all the shenanigans that they require. clothes being produced by my clove factory that'll be good next uh, April when we come to sell those oh, can't believe it's April now it's a it's Tuesday the 5th of April as I'm recording this episode it's actually my birthday tomorrow ladies and gents 6th of April I was born um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do too much celebrating tomorrow because, unfortunately, I've got a hospital appointment. And I've got to travel all the way to Boston here in the UK for that one. So I'm going to be stuck at hospital all day on my birthday. That's going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> but I guess when you get to my age, birthdays don't really, you know, they're not all that exciting anymore. They tend to be a bit of a letdown. You just, uh, you just, you've just gained another number. <laughs> You're just another year older. They don't hold the magic as they used to when I was a child all them years ago. Getting loads of wonderful presents and gifts off the family and friends. But of course, that means that normally on my birthday, or certainly for the last couple of years on my birthday what i've done on my birthday is a an all-day live stream over on twitch um but because i'm going to be away tomorrow i'm going to have to delay that so i'm actually going to do my live all day live stream on um thursday this week i am So on uh, Thursday the 7th of April, I'll be on Twitch all day playing games, playing different games throughout the day, whatever takes my fancy, whatever takes me, uh, you know, takes me a uh, notion. Um, I might be giving Ark a bit of a play. I've, I've, I loaded that up the other day because somebody in my Discord was talking about Ark 
And I was like, I haven't played that game for about five years. <laughs> and I was very big into art back in the day when it first came out and obviously completing it, you know, doing all, running servers, setting up servers, managing servers for art. Uh, I did some tutorials, which are still probably my most watched videos here on my YouTube channel for my art um, um, custom server, uh, creating running and managing without the need for buying or renting a server create basically hosting your own how to host your own servers and manage them without buying or subscribing to any of the paid services um and those are still probably like i say still probably my most watched videos on the channel i mean those have got like i think they're, they're getting close to a hundred k views on each video if they haven't already gone past a hundred k views on each video I look at those art videos and I think, wow, they were um, very popular. I would certainly love it if some of, if these farm sim videos would get 100k views. I would be delighted if, if that would, would ever happen, you know. If I could start getting 100k views on my farm sim videos, I would be a very happy person indeed. It also means I might get be able to get those last couple of subscribers that I need to hit 1,000. We're only we're at, I'm at 994 at the moment. I just need six more people to subscribe to the YouTube channel here. So if you've not already pressed the subscribe button and you're not currently subscribed to the channel, don't hesitate. Click the button today. It doesn't cost you anything. I would love to hit 1,000 subs again. And get back to a thousand subs. Um, because I I did have that many at what one at one stage, but then when a couple of years ago, when there was that whole adpocalypse thing on YouTube, when YouTube changed all the monetization stuff because of the um the Logan Paul situation where he went, you remember remember when Logan Paul went to Japan and did that video where he filmed a dead body in a forest. And he kind of screwed up YouTube for everybody after that. Because YouTube decided then that they were going to have a mass clear out of their server service. So basically any channels that had been inactive or hadn't been, you know, logged into for so long, they were basically going to delete them. So overnight, I lost loads of subs to my channel from all these inactive accounts where people were like, we're no longer logging in on using YouTube. And as a result of that, I fell below the um, the new threshold, the new minimum requirement that YouTube installed to be part of their um, partner program. Which meant that I could no longer monetize my videos and I could no longer make basically money from my YouTube content. And that's why, you know, there's no ads on my videos. There's nothing like that. If there is ads on my videos, that's YouTube running ads now because I think YouTube's implemented a system, uh, I think a year ago or two years ago, where basically they decided we can run ads on any video on our service, on, on our site, whether you're partnered or not, because we want to make money to keep, obviously, the YouTube servers and everything running and pay for our costs and stuff like that so anytime you see adverts on my videos that's not me doing that that's youtube doing that and i don't make a single penny from that which is why i say to people you know if you want to come over to twitch and subscribe to me on twitch to help me out and support me as a creator or if you want to click on any of my affiliate links um my amazon links when you're shopping online so i get a little bit of a commission from amazon for every and or if you want to use my giants partner codes when buying content for farm sim or as some people have done recently just subscribe to my patreon there's only one option and it's one dollar you could basically throw a dollar at me each month to thank me for the videos that i'm putting out and you know a dollar's not a lot. It doesn't even, you know, it doesn't even pay for a coffee or a tea, <laughs> you know. But every little bit helps.
and we will be getting close to needing to unload again in a minute. Oh, I've missed some crop. I've missed some crop. That's terrible. Don't waste the sorghum, because the sorghum's very good for production. Makes a lot of flour. There's my beacon come on again by Phil Level Warning. Phil Level Warning worked brilliantly in um in 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 single player, I have to say. However, I do have issues with it in multiplayer, I have noticed. <laughs> I put it on the multiplayer server and whilst it does all the things you expect it to, it bings and bongs and beeps and flashes lights at you as it does in single player. The problem I have in multiplayer is when it triggers the beacon to come on, on your harvester, when I turn the, the harvest, the beacon off on the harvester, I turn my beacon off, my actual beacon from the collector's edition of the game doesn't turn off so once um once the game has activated activated the beacon i'm stuck with the beacon flashing for the rest of the time until i log out of the server and exit the game <laughs> um so that's a bit of a weird one i have to remember every time i go to play multiplayer now to unplug my beacon light because otherwise it just um it like i say it just get, it gets permanently stuck in the on position and i can't turn it off yeah we're definitely getting a good harvest amount going in. Take a screenshot for the thumbnail. Let's hit it again just in case. It didn't register the first. I think I glanced the button. Oh, looks like the, the lads are about to start doing headlands by the looks of it. I tell you what, it's looking promising. Looking promising. Might well, be interesting to see if they go all the way. Or whether they're going to miss a bit around the edge of the field. I thought Matey looked like he was missing a bit. on my second headland. Sixty percent full again, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.
I'm just going to stop there because I'm 95% currently. Uh, I want to empty him. And then I'm probably just going to have him go up and down the field. 0 degrees. Let the AI work take over so I can go and have a look at the cedars. And make sure the cedars have finished that field correctly. Looks like he's doing a little bit missed in that corner there by the looks of things. I could be wrong. He may have missed a little bit in a corner because he may have done he may have done a smooth turn rather than a um Yeah, it looks like he's missed bits in the corners. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Right, he's finished. Well, he's nailed that corner okay. Like I say, it just seems to be a bit of a problem at the moment with um, some, for whatever reason with course play. I don't know what, what's the reason for it or why they haven't yet managed to fully figure it out and fix it in all the releases that we've had. But it's like, course play doesn't quite stick to the um, the options that you've asked it to. Like, I wanted it to do sharp turns for the corners. I didn't want it to just drive round it and you know do a do a do a normal turn like I'm doing now. I wanted it to stop. I wanted it to reverse. And then I want it to go off at 90 degrees, you know, a right angle corner. That's what I want course play to do at every corner on the field. And for some weird reason, he's chose not to do it. On the two corners of the field, the two corners of the field that are right angled. <laughs> it's a strange one, that. It's a strange one. He's done those corners all right. So actually that course, apart from those two tiny little bits on the corners, that course worked very well for me. Now I just need to do me rolling. Can't remember where I put my big roller. And that's all I can plant at the minute is the canola. Right. Go wait till September then to do the barley. So the two fields I was going to plant with oat, which are these two fields over here. Um, I will oil seed radish those. Same with this field. This field will obviously have oil seed radish put on it because we can't plant sorghum till next year. So I don't just want the field standing doing nothing. So, yeah, we'll have to do the oil seed radish approach. Um, there we go. That's oil seed radish selected. I, I double check now because um, I do have an issue. I do tend have a tendency, particularly in multiplayer, to go tearing off to a field to seed a crop, start seeding. And then after a couple of rows, realise I'm planting the wrong thing because I've not actually checked what the cedar is set to. <laughs> what I've selected.
Mm. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll let the worker now carry on. This fella has finished his horse plant. Again, we'll set him now to oilseed radish. And we'll have him come and do the other field. And like I say, then in... There we go. Two fields of oil seed radish. Meh! There's my sheeps. How are we doing on the old wool situation? Do I need to transport any? No, because I've already moved the wool out of the, the box today. Right, well, I'm going, going to carry on, ladies and gents. I'm going to get the sorghum harvest finitoed. And then we can look at mulching and stuff um, next time round. We'll also need to get one of the, 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 the big tractors to grab hold of the roller. And commit to um, rolling the fields that... Uh, the canola and the oilseed radish fields for us. We'll get some fertiliser. Uh, I, yeah, I might get some fertiliser sprayed on this field after I've mulched it, you know, before I cultivate it. And then um, put the old uh, canola in. And go and empty this into the silo. Well, we've got a chance. While well, waiting, while well, the harvester's going the wrong way up the field, so I can't actually unload him. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've kind of reached the end of today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode here on How Baylor On, and of course in my other series over on Calmston Farms. So take care of yourselves everybody, stay safe and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.